wrapping things up in about 15 minutes. Minion Miners and Gilly Shark will be battling for either... Uh, how do we put this? The top seed tying for first place for Gilly Shark or Minion Miners clawing their way to tying with fourth place. Obviously, it's a very pivotal series for both. Minion Miners does need to claw their way into the upper eight. And Gilly Shark, the more they can push to the top, the better off they'll be as we start to near the season's end. So, see everybody in 15 minutes. I'm going to mute myself for the coin toss, and I shall probably bring a Hansa 1 trick with me then.
everything, and we are good to go. Viv, what are your thoughts so far? <laughs> I'm excited for bingo tonight. <laughs> Always appreciate a good bingo. If you guys don't know what the bingo is for tonight, there is a bingo card. I will send the link in chat right now. And also, I'll send out that little oh, no. yeah. thing that they're trying to follow. So then you guys could also follow the bingo card. So just look that up and see what is going to take. Honestly, I just kind of feel bad for the minion miners. They have to deal with the fact that they're, you know... Opponents are playing bingo. Actually, I think it's the best way to play. Uh, because then yeah. it's not something that's normal. Because then you're not seeing Joe Rhaegar all the time with Junkrat, Lunara. I, I, we get bored of that, or We get bored. And I wanted to see something new. And as we're entering the lobby, I have to give credit to these teams having both all right. of these teams. Just got a bit of information from Drogo, so I'm going to turn your volume up relative to me. You are being put up to about 130. Speak now. Hello. How is it going? Oh, that's too loud. There we go. That should do. All right. We've got lobby yeah. number one. It's Braxis. This is, shall we say, an unusual one to first map pick? I think it's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> because then you're actually playing Braxis. And I if I know it's controversial, but I love Braxis. But then yeah. again, I play a lot of Genji too. There's a lot of good <laughs> ways to play this map, you know, just spamming Genji and taking that stupid level seven. <laughs> Unfortunately, taking Genji seems to be the easiest way to play this map. Well, yeah, you play for the top win con and it's yeah. the easiest one to play. Uh, but then there's also the fact that most teams don't actually play for the camps until after the first objective, which I think is a mistake. Mm. Depends on the but team. I think that they ARAM way too much in Braxis. And it, it just turns into just a brawl fiesta. Are you talking like scrims or Storm League? I, I'm talking about like everything. Mm. I find teams don't even utilize the camps that often. Mm. Until there's nothing else to do, no more brawling to be had. Yeah. No objective to fight over. But a lot of teams forget that you can get so much lane prio just by grabbing a camp. Yeah. They get the objective. Hmm. So... Do you mind explaining a 131? Because it's quite possible that we won't see Genji played here. And that is one of the other options beyond simply stacking globals. Yeah, so basically a 131 is where you have one person in the solo lane, normally, like your bruiser. Your three man, which is usually the healer, tank, and a mage that can hold themselves together. Or an auto attacker, just to make sure that they can survive. Uh, it has to be very easy to survive a four man basically and then you have a roamer which is the one and a lot of people don't know that a one through one can work on a two lane map is if you have a roamer which just basically oh, yeah. plays the top and bot lane and you play out of vision most of the time so that the enemy team can't really tell where you're heading hmm. so then you can easily get kills and secure objectives in both lanes hmm. that's the one one three. Now, what about the oh. one three one, which is where oh. you have an anchor like Phoenix, Junkrat, Chromie that holds that lane against any push, while the three man rotates and gets value elsewhere. Usually, so, that one is a little bit harder on Braxis. It's it's you harder, that, but you, you get much more profound advantage. You, yeah. you get a lot of profound advantage from it if you have a Sylvanas, a strong marksman like Greymane, because it means that at a dime you can be pressuring either lane and you can take camps more freely and more quickly. Plus, it yeah. means that more of your assets are capable of moving around. All right, Samuro Ben, I'm, do you remember which one of them is a Samuro one trick? I do not. Oh, I have shoot. not seen these players. Small problem. At all. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to need to swap back to the draft. 
section. I kind of forgot to do that for way too long. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> so we see our first Samara band, and we see our Lucio. What are these bands? They're, they're already surprising me. It's like, it, it's entirely possible that we're going to see a Johanna pick early here. And then I will be completely devastated from that. Wait, but that that requires Himibo to not play Deathwing main tank, which I don't know. He's willing to make that sacrifice. So Deathwing it's, main tank on this map. Yeah, that's spicy. These, these bands are already fairly problematic. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, there's a Deathwing band. They know. They know. Hold on a second. Yeah, there's the Johanna band. So, what I'd like to see on the side of Gilly Sharks, if they weren't playing Bingo, would be a Rhaegar and a Junkrat. Like a strong yeah. anchor, followed by the second best pick. Like, I think, right now, Johanna is strong, but if you can get, get two meta picks, like the Junkrat, the Blaze, or the Rhaegar, you can potentially outvalue the Johanna at least pre-20. That's usually it, and a lot of Joanna's strength actually comes from her rotation, so taking her on Braxis actually mitigates a lot of her value. Yeah. But it's so also... Whereas Rhaegar is valuable on every aspect, because he could take camps and provide a lot of pressure and yeah. cleanse at level 1. Rhaegar's a very good all-round healer now. But we haven't seen it picked up yet in the yeah. first half of the draft, which is very rare. Instead, we see yeah. Deckard. Although, oh, Sylvanas is one of those champions that can really make or break a good composition on this map. Getting an early advantage on a two-lane map can snowball really strongly, because there are less options to come back in on these types of maps. I see someone in the chat saying that, is there anyone trying to ban for the bingo strats? As I can see, not really. I don't think I see any bingo bans here. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it comes down to, like, Gazlo or Arthas or Kira. It, it's, it's interesting that, that the against. Stukov meta, or more precisely, the Stukov anti-meta, hasn't diffused down from Storm and Heroic onto Nexus in the low divisions. He's still, at the very least, first ban phase material. Okay, it's a variant main yes. tank. We might see... Uh, okay, there's a bingo. Uh, I, I, I I cannot predict Gilly Shark's strategies at this point. The bingo makes it too esoteric. <laughs> I mean, it gives them a fundamental and funny advantage in that they essentially have American Doctrine Syndrome. Like, if they don't know what the hell they're doing, neither do their enemies. Oh, that's how I draft every time. Muradin, Li Ming. I, I at least know Wait, a Rek little bit of what I'm drafting. Muradin's on Rexar, <laughs> and we've got Marshall on Li Ming. So that's a fairly well-rounded comp, fairly reasonable, in contrast to whatever Gilly Sharks <laughs> is putting together. I feel like what they're going to do is that they're going to place Gazel in the top lane and have Kira kind of act like Genji in this situation and try to gank the Rexar in the lanes. Yeah, that's and one that way to play it. Work. Because, and you can see right here, you have Averian, Hanzo, Morales. Three people who can survive in the bot lane very well. Yeah. Their comp actually is rounded out pretty well. <clears throat> and Deckard's a problematic to support to have if you want Sylvanas to step up. Definitely it, going it to be difficult. Oh, like, explanation about Stukov's position in the meta. Think about it like this. You're only going to get a quasi-cleanse at 16, and it's a quasi-cleanse that only gets value against mass crowd control, mass stuns. So uh, if you can put a lot of damage and a lot of crowd control onto a single target, Dukov is almost powerless to stop it. That's why a lot of times, if you're going to pick Stukov, a lot of people just draft up the Lunara for the DPS, because Lunara actually has a cleanse, and it's it's very useful, because then you have huh. the super strain from Stukov, and you can cleanse the CC, so you get a heal plus a cleanse. And I suppose both Johanna and Jarell would also be good counterparts, but I've also seen Uther main tank make a resurgence with Stukov, because he can also sort of fill that role. He also does a good job against burst protection, so that's 
combination I've seen that's quite tough to beat. Anyways, we should be live into game number one. Anyways, Viv, yep. how do you want to divvy things up? I'll do minion miners on the left side here. <clears throat> here we have Wesgra on the Decker. We have Himipo on the Johanna. Marsh Hole on the Lee Ming. Murderin on the Rexar and Sir Mac of Cheese on the Sylvanas. We have Lazy Hydra on Varian, Stark on the Gazlo, Chess Looter on the Hanzo, Schumann on the Morales, and EKB on the Kira. Looks like the lanes are already getting a bit weird. Hanzo and Varian are going alongside EKB, and they're instead opting to essentially put Gazlo into an anchor. So what we're looking uh, at is closer to the one three one that I was talking about, at least for the side of Gilly Sharks. I actually really like this here, uh, yeah. because Varian doesn't have any strength before level 4, really. Yeah. He's like half a hero. Looking so, for value here, it's going to be much easier for Stark to lock out Li Ming shots and minimize DPS. They're entirely reliant on Sylvanas here, and keeping the healer here means that they can at least skirmish. And now, you can see Murderin uh, basically holding their own and actually mitigated that push, that three-man gank. Yeah. And because of that, playing safe, his four-man is able to take out a turret and half of the other objectives on that. It's problematic. I think that if Gilly Sharks had played to their strength here, they might have been able to take a fort using Varian's Parian. Varian's Parian. Oh, wow. That, that sounds awful. Like, at the end of the day, they're just in a worse situation here playing into the format they're matching I, yeah inferior strength you can see murderin is actually bullying ekb in the soul lane oh basically chunking them down needing to tap but murderin is down on their mana so we'll see how this goes huh? going in gasso's already oh, taken ekb hand. stunned at the same time he may drop here or the bear may drop here we shall see That's in a second. A... And EKB lives. Oh, if he can re-engage this properly. Nope. It's huge, but, but it means that Murderin can no longer safely step. Gazel's likely going to have to cast a soak, but he's going to be a bit slow. And another tower has dropped on the side of Gilly's shark. At Sylvanas is already getting good value. It's created a small, but not unprominent soak advantage. Stark's coming down. You could see, yeah. You could see that Stark grabbed the camp early on, but it was not a great one because EKB was knocked out of the soul lane by that. Yeah. So they have no pressure with that camp, and you can yeah. see that it's basically chunked out yeah. to half. I think I would have preferred Stark to have taken and anchored that lane in the absence of EKB. As it is, so. he's going to take forever to kill this bear, which means. Minion Miners already has a full Zerg wave. Yeah, even if they lose the objective, that's 100% right there. Yeah, the reality is, though, the Gilly Sharks, I think, has inferior clear and inferior ability to leverage a strong Zerg wave. Oh, Stark is likely going to drop here. Just barely Stark makes it out. Barely makes it out. Oh, Chess Looter got chunked, though, meaning that there's not much Lazy Hydra can do to defend this. All right, it's important to look at talents. We are looking at a fairly conventional Sylvanas build, and the same can be said for Ming. We are seeing Lion's Maw in a taunt, and we are seeing what looks like an auto-attack build out of Kira. Now that that armor is active, it's that likely that Kira can actually Rexar. keep fighting the Rexar, but and this four-man is not going lane. to be able yeah. to contest at all. Johanna with Zell's Glare and Subdue is incredibly dangerous. Right here, Varian is going to survive. Yeah! Because the rest of Gilly Sharks is taking back. And with the Sylvanas push, with them having no health, this actually might be a big chunk on the floor. Yeah. And Possession is allowing them to go back in. Stark is just... Going in and trading, but meanwhile, EKB is actually holding his own against the Rexar. That is not something you see every day, but <laughs> as it stands, I think EKB is playing it fairly well at this point. Oh, they have Lazy Hydra's coming in for gank on Murderin. 
There may and be a kill here. Oh, but it hits the bear instead. If EKB was there a little bit sooner, it probably would have been. Yeah, the was there was an opening window. He might have had an option to press a lot of stuff. Like, presses D and then presses E, and I'm going to turn your volume up again. We're just going to find a happy middle for both of us. <laughs> Anyways. Fight. Oh, Sylvanas gets picked. It's wow. important to note that there are several limitations to Johanna's capacity. One of those major ones is that unless you have Radiating Faith, your ability to reliably do single target CC is more, shall we say, mediocre than a lot of other tanks. And right now, a lot of the power is in Falling Sword. So... I like this invade from Gilly yeah. Shots, they are low on resources. But, but it seems mm. that Joanna, with the reduced healing, was able to take out the Hanzo, mitigating that Morales health, and with the Zerg Wave coming in, too. But EKB is pushing out, and Zerg Mac of Cheese is late on the rotation, as is Marshall, in order to clear this out. While Circa Mac of Cheese is going to do a, a number on the Zerg Wave, it's difficult to say whether or not they're going to get out of this unscathed. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Gilly Sharks is desperately using Stark to keep the majority of this wave from even colliding on the fort. Murderin is probably gone here. Ooh, Murderin brutal. Able to get taken out. Hey, Viv. Yes. You should check the stream to see how your voice sounds. Give me a little All bit right. more feedback. Oh, we are seeing a little bit of black arrows. Two towers are going down here. Maybe a little bit more. A lot of people rotating. And Kira is going to be left in a lane. It's going to take her a long time to clear. However, Minion Miners is playing it conservative and is backing it out. In the end, I'd like to say that Gilly Shark... Ooh, Gilly Shark grabbed another pick. That makes... A significant kill difference in the favor of Gilly Shark. I am very quiet. Yes. Yeah. Still are? Hmm. Mm hmm. But that is fine. I can turn up myself. I hope that this is a little bit better, but my mic yeah. is at the most it could be. Um, yeah. We got weirdness. I, I turned you up a little bit beforehand. Problem is, I can't judge the sound that I have for my own. POV for the stream. Not quite sure how that works out. I'll have to take it into account next time I do a cast. You could probably change it in the OBS. Yeah. I'll probably mess around with the settings next game. Anyways, it's remarkable how violent Gilly Sharks has been looking for this fight. They managed to steal a camp, managed to get an invade, and ooh, EKB might cat in here? No? But there is a tank difference, so it's looking like Stark is going to be able to press up if he so desires. Level 10s are coming out for the side of Minion Miners now. Unleash the board. you can see, it's the traditional take the camp right after the objective phase, where there's no more objective to fight over, and these camps have been left lying in wait. They could have actually gotten both camps, I think that... Stark was able to take it beforehand on the siege camp, but he could have taken the bruiser as well and had that extra experience and push pressure there. Meanwhile, uh, EKB is having to deal with a pretty strong push. And wait, we have medivac. We have yeah, a medivac. <laughs> oh no! Also, it's radiating shield. It's looking like minion miners is valuing having reliable engage over having a cleanse. And it's also mind control, so their ability to, say, blow Lazy Hydra up is substantially increased at this point. Oh, there's a mind control. But you can see it's not much. I just noticed this, but we have an orb build Ming. Wait, seriously? We do. Uh, okay, I guess that means there's going to be no fireworks this game. You know, uh, which is disappointing. Or the camp that Stark ended up taking is giving EKB a good hand here. Gilly Sharks is actually going to get a lot of value in this moment. Stark takes a bit of chip. But Himibo hasn't found the courage to use Radiating Faith yet. Wait, not Radiating Faith, Blessed Shields. EKB is completely holding this point against the Rexar. That is remarkable to see. Meanwhile, you know, wait, Stark has a self cleanse. He took Robo Goblin. That's pretty crazy. Oh, Marshall's that. caught! Oh, oh Ming disappears! Gold. 
Lazy Hydra is absolutely fearlessly going on Stormac of Cheese, causing a lot of disruption. It's likely that a full Zerg Wave will go to the side of Gilly Sharks here. Really quite remarkable. With the medevac, wait, where are they? One, oh, three, one strat here. This medevac is this medevac is actually really clever. They're going to be able to take this camp and get immense value that'll amplify their Zerg wave. This that is a is actually really exactly good play. Yeah. So for the rundown for people who haven't played on this map before, the siege camp is an amplifier, while the bruiser camp is actually a more traditional ranged siege camp. Oh. We got a fight here. So this camp, the armor reduction applies to all structures, which means that this fort is going to be taking a lot more damage from the Zerg wave. It is top priority outside of killing these guardians. It's likely that our fort's going to go down here, though, unless the Zerg wave can be cleared out using Zealous Faith and both range DPS. All in all, though, Really solid defense. Oh, reinforcements oh, well. are being used to bring Lazy Hydra into the fray. That is remarkable oh retaliation. God. And this fight is now even. It's likely that Gilly Sharks are going to. Oh, that is a big oh, arrow oh. into a. Oh, that is too dead. Just like that. Sylvanas sidestepped into the arrow, which allowed them to get a double kill onto both the tank and yeah. their major DPS. And so EKB is starting the boss, the boss already. No That's need to deal with really the clear. But <laughs> the lack of someone to catch this soak will mean that the advantage that Gilly Sharks has is... It, it, they're not taking it for free, is my point. Yeah. They gave up a bit of chip, but they're likely going to get another fort here. Oh! Murderin is caught. And... Just slips away from Lazy Hydra. Warbringer used oh. to escape, and man, Stark is just absorbing so much. Really relying He's on that self cleanse. Thirty-five armor. Yeah. Thirty-five armor is actually huge. Yeah, it and allows with this, him to become the best tank for his team. This entire because fight was quite off. unfortunate for minion miners because the boss was getting value that whole time. Now, Gilly Sharks can keep now entrenching their lead, and it's going to be difficult. For minion miners, as they no longer have a lot of control over the fights in which they can afford to take. They're on a ticking timer, because there's going to be a significant period where they'll be down the tier 16. Means that Gilly Sharks may be overplaying their hand here. This is the type of fight they're looking for. Oh no! And another Never mind! Is that is a <laughs> massive oh. combo, but. The cure all doesn't go off, but the damage does. No stun, but gigantic damage. And now, they're all the closer to tier 16. These arrows are doing a lot. And the lack of a cleanse on the side of minion miners is really hurting them. It really is. I bet they didn't expect the dragon arrow to be that prominent with the yeah. fights. Jessaloder has been landing some really good arrows. Oh, Stark might actually drop here. They are They're looking to end, but everybody is coming back up. Yeah. And the Several walls are up. Oh boy. AKB is going to get sent around it. Oh, the arrow. This could be the turning point. Oh. Everybody's going to get it, but it dies, and everyone is going to go. Oh no. Timers are too short, and if mini miners. If. Sorry. Yes, mini miners will play this correctly. I believe that they can grab a keep, if not both the forts. Yeah, that is absolutely gigantic. That was the worst time to die for the side of Gilly Shark. But that core call was a little bit ambitious. On Braxis, it kind of is. It's actually pretty but painful because they went 3% on two of the Spider Queen in their last series. This has sort I of been a trend for them this season. They need to know when their win con is and when they need to back yeah. up. They definitely overplayed their hand, especially given the fact that they didn't have 16. I don't actually like this play from Minion Miners. I feel with the Sylvanas, they could have just taken both the forts rather than grabbing the camps. Because yeah. that just allowed them to not take the forts. It was just a waste of life. Why are they backing right here? here? Oh. And Sir goes. Wait. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Wait, it's already juicy. It's already oh, juicy! It. They're actually probably gonna pull it off here! What is this? 
They don't even have much core damage, but it doesn't matter. It's only 49%, and with their main DPS down, they might be able to pull it off with the Zerg Wave. Even a little bit Chest of Chest is running. So much. But he's not the only one dealing damage here. They're actually going to do that, it? That is game. <laughs> Being able to take the so What? What a play. What a play. <laughs> All right. That is game number one, and it goes to the side of Gilly Shark. Let's add a little bit of a victory here. Huh? Red victory. Oh. 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 oh, dear lord. We've got people... We've got big names in chat like Bahamut right now. I'm, I'm actually feeling terrified right now because, you know, these are the guys that are the actual pros. And here we are goofing uh. around. <laughs> yeah. That was, an just, uh... that was an excellent game to watch. <laughs> it's only... A total of 10 to 7 kills. Like, Gilly Shark only really made it out that much more. But actually, a lot of those deaths so went better. on Sir Mac of Cheese. Actually, tell me this. Do you remember when Sylvanas gets her unstoppable? Is that a 13 or a 16 talent? 16. 16. Ah, that's unfortunate. They didn't even make it there. But the yeah. main thing that I felt Gilly Sharks really accomplished was that they had so much global pressure. When you saw Mini Minus, they were playing the 4-1 comp, and every yeah. single time that one person left or three people left, they didn't capitalize on that. They yeah. weren't able to take a fort. They weren't able to do anything with kills either. When they got that full core wipe, they didn't take any structures. They just took their camps, which... Yeah. Sylvanas is definitely one of those heroes where you were getting inferior value with her if you were not using her to take structures and actually crystallize an advantage like if you're given the choice between sylvanas and any other standard dps character whether it's even something more off meta like a cassia or just something a little more conventional like a vala or a gray main the question you have to ask yourself is can we make this work to develop a strategic advantage if you want to see good sylvanas play I highly recommend checking out some of the matches for Running Wild. While they are definitely one of the more underdog teams in Nexus, they do use Sylvanas pretty close to optimally in all of NGS. Uh, that's Vert on the Sylvanas, isn't Yeah, it? but man. it was Kairu last season. Or was it if someone you, else? Yeah, I, You can also see yeah. a lot of Sylvanas gameplay happening in Storm Division. She's yeah. one of the highly contested picks right now. It, another thing that I want to talk about is I don't get why people don't take May for the same reason at times. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, Slush Ball is underrated. Yeah, huh? but then you're taking May, and that's kind of an yeah, issue. Yeah, but the rest of the kit <laughs> isn't that bad. For instance, Blizzard and Ice Wall are really easy to land if you have something else, like a Rhaegar providing the stun. I was May. able to do a big combo with the Ice Wall. Ice Wall just allows for a lot of setup. You, you can play so many things with it. It's, it's, it's also really good against hit. unstoppable champions because you can use it in the same way that you would use a Tacit or Force Wall. And you can also put champions like Deathwing into Stasis. So I think that alt alone gives her a lot of versatility, even if her base kit is lackluster. All right. It appears that we are going into game number two. So... On Cursed Hollow, nonetheless. Let's see if they... I it feel like, like Gilly Shorts was... have, like, a clearer sense of what macro pressure is. Yeah. So, if... I don't know if Minion Miners is going to be able to catch up to this, especially on a macro-heavy map like this. Yeah. Who I'm, picked this map? I'm pretty way? certain... Wait, Bingo picked Cursed. Good to know. Whoops, that was a mistake on my part. Yeah, this is game number two for... And it's a Gilly Shark pick again. Who's following the bingo card? Anyone? I, but yeah, I, the bingo card is driving me <laughs> mad as a concept. It's absolutely <laughs> wild. I think it's a great concept. Absolutely amazing idea. Yeah. It's in order to make sure that your games are more fun. And yeah. a little bit less stressful. Honestly, I couldn't handle the stress of adding one more thing into rotation. <laughs> like, you know, I, I've got Gray, 
and Ark. Even Felipe is a little bit wild, so it is a little bit of cat herding with Calf K. Well, it is a little bit high stress on its own. <laughs> yeah, stress is always healthy, yeah. I think. Really, are, are you sure our Div B levels of stress were healthy? Oh, no. Get me out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's exactly what you did. You said, nope, 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 nope. I nope, was nope, out. Nope. I'm out of here. Then I threw yeah. it straight to the heroic, and then I never looked back. <laughs> oh. Oh. We finally caught up on you. Oh, that's what well, you not think, really. buddy. Well, well, at least we've <laughs> caught up to your ghost. See you in Storm to next my... season, buddy. <laughs> See you in Storm. Uh, Probably. Who knows, maybe... I... I... I'm trying to see what will happen. Yeah. CCL, it seems like it will be like a little bit of a a lot of roster changes since Masters Clash and CCL are conflicting, but... Oh, what's the deal with Masters Clash? Uh, they, they basically uh, scheduled CCL and Masters Clash at the same time. So mm. people from CCL can't play in Masters Clash and vice versa. So a bunch of EU people are just... It's going to be a very interesting to see how CCL develops. All right, we are in game number... Uh, game number two on Cursed Hollow. This is match point on the side of Gilly Shark. Question is, do they take it all? Do they take home their bingo boards? Do they take home the NGS win? Do they put themselves into a place where they tie for first. We shall see. Already you can see the Abathur being banned out. They're scared hey. of that macro pressure. Speaking of which, you know what BDH is? Baby Diamond Hands. Ah, uh, uh, you're getting made fun of in chat, Viv. Uh, don't worry, I know that's Justin. Nope, it's Stur. <laughs> Wait, that uh, that is Justin, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is Justin. Oh no! Wait. Oh no! Justin, you didn't even make it into Storm Div, so <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> All right, we're seeing fairly predictable bands. No more Samuro nonsense on the side of Gilly Shark, and no more Deathwing main tank for minion miners. <laughs> Both teams have discarded the meta in favor of gigantic middle fingers for each other. Whoa! Okay! They know the macro pressure was just too strong, even on a two-lane map like Brax's. If by macro pressure you mean the ability to run it down core at will. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. They did not get a bingo last game. Oh, Wait, really? Oh my. But maybe they're trying out for something else. So I thought the bingo get... was transient from game to game to game. Like, they're trying to get bingo for all the games. Right? No? Um, They might have been working for the fourth row, but I could be wrong. Yeah. No oh, well. this one. We'll have to ask them the results of the bingo. And that's a Johanna first pick? Himmy Bo. Of course, it's prioritized. On a three-lane map like this, it's a little bit better. Because yeah. then you could actually control the rotations a lot more. And possibly yeah. have the macro pressure that they are looking for. Johanna that is they missed dealing. numerically hella overtuned right now. So her capacity to wave clear is pretty good level one as well. Even if you're not using her to anchor. Definitely available. She was Ooh. already picked before the buffs. That's a big like power pick on the side of Gilly Sharks. Although with Johanna Picking showing. Fisto this early into a Johanna might be a little bit risky, but I mean I what's like Johanna it. gonna do against the Mephisto? That's fair. It's fair. But there's also the thing of she can easily dodge a lot of the damage. Or so stop during that. But as you can see, they're trying. The side of Mini Miners picked a fall set into the Mephisto, so I feel like what they're trying to do is get that global pressure. So yeah. I'm Bribing and fall set is going to be try... ridiculous at this point. It means that of these two teams, I think by far Minion Miners is already showing a stronger showing for bosses. 
which will give them a huge advantage in terms of shaping that out as a win condition. And as you can see, the Sylvanas was banned because you already have two globals. The other one would be like Tahaka, which is prioritized. I would ban Tahaka if I were on the side of mini miners right here. Yeah. Just because of that macro pressure. But then again, there's also the fact that they're playing bingo. Will they really yeah. pick Tahaka? That's too got ban. I don't agree with, especially while you have something like a Johanna that counteracts it. And it means that oh. Rhaegar goes onto the side of Gilly Sharks. It's good all rounder. It's good for adding more macro, and it gives stronger rotations. It'll give a lot of... What? It's it's kind of strange to see Rhaegar not being banned out and picked in the second round of drafts, which is not usually seen. The hunt is on. What? Lunara comes out. <sighs> What the f There was a conversation about the subjectivity of red team and bingo oh, yeah. going on in chat, and I am so confused. Wait, Rainer and Lunara and Sonya? Oh my, what is going on right now? These are some they're weird things. They're going heavy macro. They knew their mistakes from last game, and they're trying to correct it. They're like, we can play a macro comp. Pretty well. Just give us the chance. They kind of missed out and, because they could have just taken the Haka instead of Sonya here. If the Lunar chooses the Q level four, I'm going to be very disappointed. Oh, but there comes the Dahaka. Like yeah. I said, it should have been banned. As yeah, it no kidding. So much global pressure, and that's the last major global. It's a weird choice to prioritize Stukov over Rexar. Honestly, that might come over back to Rhaegar, bite them. Yeah. Yeah, wait, did I call it Rexar again? Yes, I did. Yeah. Truly, Maybe I Nexus have. Maybe Nexus Div hasn't found out that Rhaegar's OP, but I don't see how that can happen. I mean, I've seen it banned out in a lot of the other matches I've played. Maybe on board, uh, running wild. Heck, even a top division team has figured that one out as well. <laughs> I am surprised about the uh, underemphasis of Junkrat. Oh, especially on this map Junkers with a lot of jokes. It's kind of hard to do if you're not coordinated. Because hmm? you have to play in a specific way. You have to play very uh, bunker, kind of bunkered down, in a yeah. sense. You can't really charge at the enemy team. Whereas, if you look at the side of minion miners, they're a very All heavy right, we are in game off. number three. Control shift. Control shift S. Heroes. Alt. Game number two. D. All right. Shall we? And we shall. On the side of Minion Miners, we have Sonya uh, uh, being played by Marshall Murderin on the Falstead, Kimmy Bo on Johanna, Sir Mac of Cheese on the Lenara, and Wesgra on the Brightwing. We have Schumann on Raynor, EKB on Pisto, Stark is on Rhaegar, Lazy Hydra is on Anubarak, and Chess Looter is on Dahaka. They have. Really swapped up the rules a lot. We shall they see how really that goes have. for them. All right, we're seeing slam build and exterminator Rainer and a W build Mephisto. As well as it, it seems like both teams are trying to play for that macro, but it looks like Gilly yeah. Sharks has the Mephisto for that extra team fight. Boom. Yeah. It's interesting to see what their talents are going to be. I have a clear one Ooh. for each of these heroes, but you can already see Fly is coming out. So it looks like that global mm. pressure is going to be down for a little yeah. bit. And understand, oh, Chess Looter catches freaking Marshall. He just lost nearly 90% of his health and the Brightwing comes into Z and, oh. uh-oh. That is a mistake on Chess Looter. I would have started backing out immediately when I see the Brightwing TP, but it looks like they baited it, and the Brightwing was able to take half yeah. its their health. Do you know Just Looter is really determined to do a tongue into towers? He's playing the lane very I passively, which is fine, especially into a. Tony, oh, yeah, going to do more damage. Shuman has left the camp uncapped, and EKB is just giving a little bit of assistance there. Rainers uh, moving uh, to the camp. I, I don't know start. how I feel about the camp choice of mini miners yeah it doesn't make sense on this the map opposite camp you want to save yeah. the opposite camp for the objective so oh. in this case objective is bought you want the top camp to be going 
with the objective and basically abuse your global pressure. You have yeah. right wing and false stat. You want to be them to be pushing with the siege camp top. Well, the three man stalls out the objective, yeah. and then once they actually put resources into clearing top, you fly down, you teleport yeah. down, get the objective for free. This camp play is unusual. We'll see if they can make it work. All right, level fours are coming out. We see Spite, and it's a standard W build for a new Barak. Thank you, Lunara, for picking that level 4. You're playing to your win con. Fantastic. <laughs> Nature calling. Nature's calling. If I see anything other than that in Storm League, I just sort of die inside. Because oh I know I'm gosh. going to be soaking lanes. I see it all the time, and Wait, I hate it. Wait, hold on a second. Gilly Sharks <laughs> is really pushing bot lane out here. They've freaking buffed these dudes with Exterminator. They're actually doing a boatload of damage. They're, they're going to take a 40 here. Minion Miners is actually playing their globals not to the potential that I would like to see. Yeah. I would place the globals in the opposite lane of wherever the enemy heroes are. And then I'd basically place Lunar, Johanna, Bot, trying to stall out that rotate with the yeah. Falstad in the mid lane, pushing that out. But with the Nature's Calling, I could see why they brought Lunara to the mid lane. I mean, if they can get equivalent value here and take out of fort, it's not so bad, but they're not going to, and they also gave up the tribute. They only get half a fort, and it's in a lane without a boss, which is unfortunate. It means that there's going to be constant pressure in the bot lane, which is going to make taking the bot boss a lot more difficult for the that side of minion also, miners. That like, also mitigates a lot of what false deck could do in the off lane. If yeah. they actually take a top fort or bot fort as they with the false end on their team, they can give so much pressure. But it, Ooh, I, overall, I'm not happy with how the globals are playing out. Chest looter is in the proper lane, but I I'd rather see false end and bright wing be in different locations. Well, false end being left in bot lane. This and is what we are I want seeing see. Lunara taking. Choking Pollen. So the burst potential isn't too bad on the side of minion miners. No, but it's mostly sustained with the basic attack Falstad with the Lunara. Actually, basically. let me see here. Did the Falstad take secret weapon? Oh, no, the Falstad did not take the talent that amplifies spell damage with his Q. That's unfortunate because okay. that was a chance for synergy. Okay. Yeah. As it is, I think Amy is going to be able to stall this out once or twice. All right? Yep, there it is. Yes. This isn't a but bad situation. False set being bought. Right the way now. they're playing this isn't that bad. It means that it's going to let them get a little bit of pressure. Oh, that's an early stack. But nothing is going to come out of it, except maybe a dead himbo. Oh, EKB just comes in, teleports, and kills. Refuses to elaborate immediately after. Minion Miners is not understanding their win condition here. They're supposed to be playing for macro, but they're getting out macroed and out team fought because they're not playing properly to their win con. Speaking of deaths, we actually have only seen the one on Himibo so far. So That is true. There hasn't been needless bloodshed here, yeah. which but I normally like to see, but there's a the lot same of time, brawling. Yeah, the, the brawling hasn't worked out in the favor of Minion Miners. Oh, Murderman gets murdered! And they're immediately and going like to take a, a boss, boss here. Call. Oh, oh my gosh. And with the Hyperion, I feel like they could take a keep with this. I would just give a keep. Play for keep. I'd say core is totally possible here. It really could be, but I think like playing well, it safe. Remember, the these dudes are going to all of these dudes are gonna get exterminated. And they're going to be amplified, and there's gonna be a boss that's acting as protection. There is no similar of a play of value. No, Exterminator doesn't actually mm. affect the tower damage, but it does affect the minions. But they're not playing Wait, for it. They're playing yes, for the it boss. affects the tower damage. It affects attack speed for them. Oh, I, yeah, that's what I mean. It, it affects like the minions' attack speed, but it doesn't change his damage overall. Oh, you mean as in but minions numerically? Yeah, minions it doesn't show up on Rainer. Yeah. Minions are actually really powerful though, because like. If you have a full wave, that's equivalent to a gray mate attacking yeah. a fort in melee. Yeah, I think they missed out on a big opportunity here in favor of taking a boss. 
The equivalent play isn't necessarily as good. Although they having this... Get, they got half a turret. Yeah. Definitely a, a, lot, a huge advantage and a huge swing that really wasn't actualized. But a cursed boss is a potentially equal play. Only problem is it's going to be difficult for the side. And a peeling Durance, which kills the Lunara and chunks the false set into submission. Oh, false set's no. too low to do anything, and they get a curse with the boss going to the top lane. This this is a disaster. This is a disaster. Marshall also bites the dust. Oh my gosh. What a bloodbath. Yeah. This boss, if given the freedom to act, will go all the way to a keep. And meanwhile, they're pushing out bot lane some more. But playing this way does mean that they aren't going to be able to get concentrated value. It's likely that the Lunar will clear out the boss, and they'll just get bot side keep. I'm seeing an odd choice on Stark's side to just take this bruiser. It means that if they wanted to take a fight now, they wouldn't have a 0% chance of winning. I feel Wait, like Himibo just it. got caught! Oh my gosh! Himibo! That might have been a game-ending mistake. With the cocoon going out on the bright wing, Lunar is able to bring it oh. out, but with the tongue, this oh, is no. possibly game. Yeah. If they play this, but it looks like they're going for the mid-keep. What's happening here? You guys I think have your Hyperion up in 10 seconds. Go for core. <laughs> I think it's all right. I think that they've learned from their previous mistake from last game. Yeah. They got burned that once. They're not interested. Oh, Marshall tries and dies. Nope. False to gusts. But at the same time, this is definitely a lost keep. And it's going to put on a lot of pressure. Unless... And it looks like Jurens is going out on Marshall! Yeah. But is it enough? It no, looks it's like not. Marshall's... Oh. Marshall manages... Well, wait. Himibo picks up the kill... on... Chess Looter there. Huh. They have a lot of macro pressure here. And it looks like since they weren't even able to take mid-keep with a Bruiser, yeah. maybe boss call wasn't the right decision for them. Um... You mean as in... Like like, or, I mean, core call. Yeah. Uh, but if they had the keep beforehand when they pushed with the boss, that would have yeah. been a win call. They Absolutely. Absolutely. The question is, how do they take value like now? The next boss is like up for a minute. They're going to have to play it slow, and it's likely that minion miners will get the opportunity to hit 16 before the next major fight happens. Mm -hmm. If they're smart, they just soak it up and do fine. Amiibo, so however, is safe. really disconnected from the rest of his team. It means that there's a lot of freedom for Minion Miners to make a play in the next level. We're seeing some fairly conventional talents. Plus, oh, rallying cry. Sharks. Oh, playing aggressively, but the cocoon uh -oh. is not follow up. Durance doesn't hit anything. And Himibo is forced to alt out. That's a lot, and it's likely going to be a keep here. That is keep. Even if they just leave Hyperion alone, it will take it. Yeah. Oh. Lazy Hydra oh, missed out, but Wesgaros getting clipped. EKB showing us how Mephisto's omnidirectional damage really makes it hard to dodge and evade. So Honestly. Leap, but they weren't able to follow yeah. it up. Murdering is caught by the epicenter, and he's next. This is game. Wow. Wow. That happened almost instantly. Just three people getting Mephisto'd. That is definitely the value of Static Field showing up just like that. Bang. And it looks like, oh. Just a bloodbath. Yeah, that was big wins on the side of Gilly Sharks. Means they're tied for they first place are. right now. Although, the real question is, did they win the bingo? Did they win the bingo? Can anyone tell us? Well, 
If the Sharks want to give a chat, we shall see. Also, if you want to hear a funny statistic from that game, guess who had top damage? Uh, what Sonya. was it, Johanna? Uh, Sonya. Yeah. That's just a lot of brawling in the lane. I don't think it really did sure. much value otherwise. And, and like with the leap, too, it, it, they had a very sustained fighty comp. All and right. picking Sonya just kind of like counteracted that with the leap. If they went Wrath, then maybe. But they didn't really play to their win con. They always went for team fights. Yeah. And a lot of aggressive team fights in that. Oh, hey. Chess Looter is above us. We might want to join him. All right, let's go ahead. All right. How? Okay. I'm. Congratulations, Chess Looter. How are you feeling after that one victory? Wait. That big victory. I'm, I'm feeling concerned, man. I have one simple question. What? Okay. <laughs> what color were we? You were red. You were red from oh, us. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so you got bingo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. I would define you guys as being the red team. Yeah. So you Wonderful. guys are totally fine. Uh, I, I saw that you guys were abusing them in every sense of the word in terms of macro. And I, I really loved how you played the Braxis game because it's not normally seen with Medivac but you guys played it beautifully giving a lot of global pressure onto the enemy team the funny thing about picking Medic on that map is it's really her best map outside of doing cheesy things like juice mm -hmm. the lanes are relatively straightforward there aren't a lot of bush flank opportunities it's a two lane map and if you want to try and rotate it's a nice wide corridor that's with some bushes that are easy to check. It's really your best map. <laughs> it's it's really good, and you guys played it beautifully, because usually you see a 1-1-3 one, one, or a 1-3 uh, where you have like one person roaming and trying to kill, and then you have three man just holding an anchoring bot. But you guys just had one person anchor bot half the time and rotate around, and that was a really good one. And with some medic really love, though. Out. With the medic love. With the medic giving some love for the Junkrat. Wait, the uh, Gazlo. Gazlo. <laughs> Wait, was it the Junkrat Gazlo skin? Like the sort of ga... What, what's it even called, that skin? I lost track after the clamps. You don't look past the clamps. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's no. the name of the skin? Right. What you need, kiddo? At any rate, it, it was really good because I saw that... Uh, mini miners were playing for macro, but they had a macro comp on the curse hall. They were trying to redeem themselves there. But you guys basically forced fights and made sure that they could not utilize it in the proper way. You guys went to the globals and you basically said, I'm pushing the lane where the globals are at. So they can't utilize that pressure, which yeah. was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I, I just thought you guys had missed one opportunity to push for the keep when you grabbed the bot boss when you stole it. You guys yeah. had Hyperion. Why didn't you go for it? I think at that point we had a lead and so rather than pushing the envelope and maybe getting burned for it we just wanted to stay stable, stay ahead and capitalize on our maybe smaller advantage but over a longer period of time yeah. But you guys just basically took it off the map because that got uh, very little value Yeah, it from... got about a f four and a half and I don't think you necessarily had to force a fight with it if you had just exterminated the Siege Giants and the Catapult, you could have just played to defend those. You just play defensively and basically protect your people with a Hyperion out. And that's how I would like to see it. But you guys played against their globals yeah. really well on Curse. And I want like a lot of yeah. teams to really make And taking the boss and looking close. for a Curse after it was a really smart play. It kept them completely distracted while you took bot anyways. Mm-hmm. It did apply a lot of macro pressure. Either way, congratulations on your victory. Do you have anyone you want to shout out? Any final remarks? What's up? Well, first of all, shout out to Gilly for helping bring the team together. Shout out to the both of you for casting. I can't wait right. to watch the VOD later. Shout out to Minion Miners for giving us a great series and 
another opportunity to play Bingo. I don't know. And shout out to Stark for playing despite having a Wisdom Tooth out yesterday. Oh! <laughs> Didn't seem to hurt his reflexes at all. Those were some really good Gazla R's. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think, have one I think final question. taking the coding just for that. <laughs> Uh, I have one uh, final question for you. What I, I haven't seen Rhaegar prioritized much within this these series. Can you explain why? I can't really speak for the other teams in the division, but for us, we didn't have a Rhaegar square, so we didn't have a need to pick up. <laughs> Uh, that's chess looter from from Gilly Sharks. Congratulations on your victory and, and the bingo. Yeah, more importantly, the bingo. More importantly, the bingo. That's how you know you really won. Thank you very much for the cast. Hi. Anyways, I hope you have a good night. Thank you. You both as well. All right, man. Uh, I'd say that was a pretty entertaining series to watch. Oh, yeah. Good plays from both the teams. It just felt like a few missed opportunities in some yeah. situations. But overall, Gilly I feel Sharks like was, it was relentless. Good. And I think if anyone were to review either of these games to glisten knowledge, it's absolutely the Crescent Hollow one that should give the greatest insight. Well, I don't necessarily agree with looking for doing both the camps. Holding both the camps like that because you can get invaded on using a good point. Using the one that is expected as the distraction as the primary push and using that to cheese out a fort instantly, while also simultaneously moving to the globals to prevent faster rotations. They picked a good fight. It's as simple as that. They picked a good fight, they stalled the rotations using the bruisers, and they utilized their capacity with Rainer to cheese down a fort. It was a smart macro. move. They played their macro spectacularly. They well, played their win con very well. It wasn't just simply macro, it wasn't just simply control. They had a lot of control. <laughs> Doing the, the game necessarily, it, 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 it's a higher level. Is what I'm yes. saying, and that's definitely what distinguished them from minion miners. The other thing that's important yeah. to note is that it seems like, as the season goes on, Johanna is seeing less and less wins when she actually gets through, which is interesting to watch. Whether it's just simply because people haven't been able to play Johanna at all, or whether it's because people are figuring out countermeasures, I think we shall see in a few months. At least, at least before you know the. Next patch changes everything all over again. Yes. Usually I see Rhaegar getting more victories because it's a good countermeasure to the Johanna. Hmm. Uh, How's that? At least that's what I see in games, Storm League and like Storm Division. It's usually the Rhaegar is Actually, the one that gets more pressure. That's an interesting question. How does the Rhaegar end up working well into the Johanna? Uh, basically, he can mash the rotations and gain that macro pressure that Joanna usually has. And then you can have a tank with better CC, is the mm. thing. It, it's just like, it's both of them mitigate what the other one can do, right? <laughs> Johanna can mitigate a lot of what Rhaegar could do aggressively, but uh, Rhaegar mitigates the macro pressure that Johanna yeah. gives. So, in that question, if someone's looking to actually counter Johanna, it's important to at least match that mechanical advantage of something else. So, for instance... Usually, yes. Junkrat is a really good one, I would yeah. say. Uh, if you can, like, get keep that rotational strength with Junkrat, that's huge. That's why he's prioritized still, even after nerfs. He's incredibly good on keeping that, that pressure in macro. Absolutely. On the... On the same side, uh, for what's what was I gonna say? I think Blaze is also worth considering, just simply because he is highly capable of clearing, probably the fastest right now, and he also allows you to run a lot of interesting tanks because he brings a lot of what a tank is supposed to bring to the table. 
So you could potentially yeah. do something like a Tyrael or another more higher mobility tank that doesn't necessarily fit into a standard definition. And exactly. the major advantage with that against Johanna is her engagement range sans her alts is pretty damn low. And her blinds aren't exactly omnidirectional in the same way that Condemn is. I think the best way to control her is to just simply not be in the same space as her. That end. Not interacting with her shield. So something like a Leoric right. is interesting. I think that we are good then. We have concluded our cast. Thank you everybody for watching and see I you guess. in another series. Hopefully.